One of the hardest things people have to decide when they're ready to get fit, get healthy, or get back on track is which diet to choose. In other videos on this channel, we'll discuss specific diets in detail, which changes they're supposed to make within your body, pros and cons, potential pitfalls, and so on. Keto, Atkins, Weight Watchers, low carb, high fat, high protein, raw food detox, paleo, plant-based challenges, etc. But in this video, I want to share the real reason why most of them work. For most people, most of the time, when done consistently over a relatively short period of time. Which I hope is good news for you, because no one wants to jump from diet to diet. And I don't want you to put off starting something because you're not sure if it's gonna work. Plus, I have one thing that I'm gonna share at the end that I hate about all of these popular diets, but will hopefully be a huge encouragement for you. Let's go. This is our first time meeting. My name is Marcus Bailey, and my goal is to help as many people as possible not only make the decision to take control of their health and wellness, but give you tips, tricks, resources, and tools to help you enjoy it and stick with it long term. So, here's what we're going to cover boiling down all the popular diets into the things that they all have in common. Explain a little bit about why those common things are the real reason diets work for most people over a short term. And last, I'll share that one thing that I talked about that I hate about all the diet plans and protocols. But again, that comes with some great news for you and maybe something that you've never heard before. As you watch this video, if you hear something helpful or something you like, please subscribe so that you can hear more videos like this in the future. If not, let me know in the comments what you may have heard that you disagree with. So first up, what five things do all the major diet plans, weight loss plans, 30 day challenges, detox systems, and so on ask you to include or eliminate if you're looking to stay pretty close to doing it by the book? The first thing that almost all diets ask you to do is to set barriers and boundaries. By that, I mean you are required to meet certain minimums, maximums, or stay within a pretty tight range. An example would be that a ketogenic diet asks that you put a cap on or limit the amount of carbohydrates that you take in so that you can stay in ketosis. Weight Watchers and similar plans give you point values of food and drinks and you have to budget out your intake so that you don't exceed a certain number of total points. Certain diets require you consume a minimum amount of proteins or fats each day, but they all have some sort of boundaries that you either need to stay inside or outside of. Another common requirement of most popular diets is limiting, if not eliminating altogether, sugary foods and beverages and fast food. Some diets do allow you to consume these things, but the number of points you'd have to give up is so high that you're almost better off just skipping it all together because there's probably not much else that you could eat in that day. There are some processed foods that are allowed and even encouraged on certain diets. So for this discussion, highly processed pre-made meals, protein bars, and drinks are made to look good on a nutrition label for the short term. We'll talk in another video about the long-term lifestyle and health impacts of these items. The third characteristic of popular diets that are a part of the reason why they work most of the time for most people, regardless of which one you choose, is the requirement to drink enough water each day, either a gallon, a certain number of ounces based on body weight, but some specific call to raise your intake of water. The fourth common thread that ties all these diets together is the emphasis to plan for certain circumstances like work, travel, and social settings. One of the first things most diet plans will acknowledge is the challenges that a busy calendar presents. Weekly meal prep, checking restaurant websites ahead of time, eating healthy snacks before you go into a meal where you know you won't have any good options, are some of the tips that you'll hear to help you stay on track with your weight loss and diet goals. The fifth and final thing that's addressed with almost all diet plans is a list of alternatives that will help you feel like you're not giving anything up or depriving yourself of anything. This is most common with point or calorie counting type plans because you are able to get processed versions of the same foods with sugar substitutes or additives. Again, although it may be effective for the short term, we will talk about the impacts of highly processed foods later. So just to summarize, most of the popular diets work most of the time for most people because they have at least five things in common. They restrict the intake of things you may have been previously taking in too much of or require you take in more of something you may have been under consuming. Primarily setting targets and boundaries on macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, fats, or points. 
Sugary foods and beverages and fast food are either prohibited or so high in points that you have to give up that you just end up passing on it. And I know that one can be tough because oftentimes people have to power themselves through that by saying, it's only for 30 days, it's only for 60 days. You start drinking the right amount of water, which helps your body stay hydrated and gives it the ability to flush out waste. You start packing a lunch for work, looking online ahead of time to pick the best places to eat that have healthy options. And maybe you do some beginning of the week meal prepping and you start seeking out alternative ways to remake some of your favorite meals. Find healthier versions of food so that you can stick to your diet plan or start treating indulgences as a treat or reward versus something that you snack on all throughout the day. So with all these changes being made, especially if you're just getting started, it's pretty easy to see why most diets work because just these five things alone work wonders to help you lose your first 10, 20, or 30 pounds. It gives you some energy to work out a little bit more and really helps you to start taking inventory of your healthy habits. Now, whether you fill in the rest of the blanks with keto meals, paleo meals, plant-based meals, high fat foods, high protein foods, low carb, high fiber, or whatever, it's pretty common to see results, at least in the short term with these major diet programs because of those five things. So the real reason why these plans work is not necessarily because they're based off of ancestral eating, heart healthiness, or because they're part of a best-selling book or endorsed by a celebrity. You simply cut a lot of bad stuff out of your diet and you add some of the good stuff in. And that brings me to my final point. Earlier, I said that I would share something that I absolutely hate about all these diets. Something that really a lot of people haven't been told, but could be very encouraging. Now, I know that there are specific benefits to diets when it comes to people with certain conditions like type 2 diabetes, autoimmune disease, epilepsy, and others that we'll discuss on their own. But for the basic purpose of kicking off a weight loss journey over a 30, 60, 90 day period of time, here's the one thing that I hate about all these diets. They make you think it was the diet that worked and not you. Let me say that again. They make you think it was the diet plan that worked and not you. Please don't mistake what I'm saying. I 100% believe that we all need a boost, some help and support to make these kinds of changes. At 240 plus pounds, I turned a lot of places to try to get the help and the guidance that I needed. Let me give you an example of what I mean. If you have ever taught a child to ride a bike or remember someone teaching you to ride a bike, someone holds the bike and walks or runs beside you while you ride. Eventually, they are only holding on to the seat, but you barely notice because you are so focused on wanting to learn and keep your eyes focused forward. At some point, you look back and yell, don't let go, only to turn your head and realize that they let go of the bike a block back and you've been doing it yourself. Now what may happen then, once you realize it's you riding by yourself, is you might wobble a bit or even fall. But that only happens when your mind realizes that no one is holding on. That's where I really want to encourage you and say what I wish people would have said to me. It's okay to look for some structure and guidance to get started, but don't take all the credit away from yourself as you start to see results. It's you doing the hard work. It's you making the hard choices. It's you that's forming all the good habits. And you should feel good about telling yourself, I started using the keto plan or vegan plan to get me going, but I took control of my health. I had the courage to say no to the carry-in lunch at work, and I have all I need right here to keep making good choices. And if I have something I don't feel good about, I'm okay knowing I can take control right back with my next bite. I hope this was helpful, and I hope it makes the initial choice of choosing a diet plan a little bit easier. We will talk in detail about each and other videos, but if you're not sure today on which one you wanna do, you can at least start with the five things we talked about in this video. Setting boundaries, cutting down or cutting out sugary drinks, foods, and fast food. Drink plenty of water, plan ahead and don't get caught without a good option to eat, and find better ways to enjoy things that you already like. If you found value with this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. My goal is to give you practical and straightforward information to empower you to do something great for yourself, and that's invest in your own health and well-being. Make sure you're getting notifications on this channel so you can keep all things in focus regarding your health journey. Meals, movement, and mindset. Thanks for watching and see you next time.